Our next guest knows firsthand the heartbreak of suicide. Cindy Gale's daughter, Dawn Marie, was 14 years old when she died by suicide. That was 10 years ago, and now Cindy visits schools across Canada sharing her story and speaks to youth about bullying and suicide. Cindy Gale, thank you for coming and visiting with me again. I can't believe that um, it has been so long because we visited right at the beginning of all of this. Tell our audience about Dawn Marie. Well, Dawn Marie was 14 and she was in grade uh, nine in, in British Columbia. So for her, it was her second year of high school. And she was the typical 14 year old in the year 2000. She liked the Spice Girls and the back, what the Backstreet Boys. Oh, yeah. And she went through the purple hair and the green hair and the pink hair. And she was just, she was pretty. a great kid. She was pretty. She was popular. Um, she was popular. She had a core group of five friends. Um, she had a best friend that they'd been best friends for several years. And she was, they used to, both of them, always refer to themselves as uh, going to be me and Aunt Deb. And Aunt Deb being my best friend since I was like 12 years old. And we're still best friends. And you were very close as mother and daughter. Yes. And tell us what happened that day in 2000. Um, she had Dom Marie had come home from school and um, asked if she could go to her best friend's. Uh, it was Friday, and so later on she went, and then later on uh, Daniel and I, my youngest son, we went out for groceries, and her dad and his friend went out and doing something with cars. And when we came home, I remember saying that Dom Marie's key was on the floor, and I thought that was kind of odd, and. and said, you know, how was she going to get back in the house if she didn't take her house key? Never once thinking that she was home. And it wasn't long after that that uh, DJ, our youngest, asked if he could go watch TV in her bedroom. And uh, he went in, and please remember that he was 13, walked in her bedroom to watch TV, and he was the one that actually found her. So I often say he didn't, he didn't watch TV that night, but what he did see, he will never forget. And um, so Don Marie had uh, chosen to take her life, a choice that I am very firm in my belief was the wrong choice, but that was the choice that she made. She hung herself, and you, over the years, have had opportunity to tell many, many students the impact of bullying on, on a student that can just snap their, their sense of hope. What has that meant for you to be able to tell Dawn's story in the hopes of stopping others? For me, it's, it's saving other kids, it's like sharing her story. It's really hard as her mom to know that I couldn't save her. But to be able to go out and share her experience and I, I firmly believe the one thing that I bring to the table in all of the suicide prevention is that I tart from my heart. When this first started, I, would, I remember the first time I spoke publicly, I think for like five weeks, I wrote and rewrote and rewrote. And then when I get out there, like I just pray every time, please God, keep me strong to get through this. And I found that I don't, you know, I spent three weeks preparing notes and I didn't look at them. You, you do the speaking. You did lots of preparing over this. You saw her bullies go to court. Yes, I did. It was a great disappointment. Justice system wasn't adequate for this enormous kind of pain. And then you had the ultimate spiritual battle over this stuff because, I mean, nothing would make me rail more at God than this kind of encounter. Tell us about that. Tell us about meeting God over the death of Don Marie. I think initially I, I, um, I was angry. But being a Christian, I believe that God communicates with us. And I firmly believe that he was very clear in his direction to me that it was not him who caused those girls to behave the way they did. It wasn't him. But God gives me the strength to get out and continue to share Don Marie's story, even though it's heartbreaking and it's very can be very difficult. But when those kids come up to me afterwards and tell me, you know, I tried to, to do that three days ago, or 
you know what? I know how she felt, and I'm glad you're here. Parents don't want to be me, and kids don't want to be Dawn Marie. So for me, I'm real. I'm not something that somebody said, okay, this is what you need to say. That's not how it is. My pain is real. My words are real, and they come from my heart. And God directs me every step of the way. And how do you make that connection through your grief to God? Many ways. Many ways. And I, I just want to share that recently I had um, been, you know, talking to God about why 11 years later is it still so painful and why do I still feel that I need to get out there and educate and empower and encourage youth to make changes. And he communicated to me through um, something that came out actually on the internet of an eight-year-old boy in somewhere in the States. And he had called into a Christian radio station about having to put a, a calf down. And he said, God told me that he understands because he lost his, he gave up his son for us. And it, I thought, I needed to hear that. And that was God's way of letting me know that he does understand the pain that I'm feeling. And he reminded me that he also gave up his son for us. And for brokenness to be repaired. And so yeah. now you're taking the brokenness that took Dawn's life yeah. and hoping to repair other lives with it. You know, we have someone in our studio audience today who wants to make a comment, who has um, had very close experience with this. Michael, you, um, you have learned some lessons about suicide, and you've lost the mother of your child to suicide. What would you say in listening to this? Well, the biggest thing I focus on with what I'm trying to do is that there's courage that it takes to be able to go walk off to someone and ask for help when you're going through those things. It takes courage to live and it takes courage to remember the good things about the people that have been lost in the process because without those things you tend to get lost in the, the tragedy and you don't focus on how that person lived or the, the good things that they may have done within their life. All right, thank you. Your story with Don Marie is so important for all of us to remember. You've got uh, information available through our website as well. Thank you for being a hope giver. Thank you Thank for you. courage. Thank you. All right. And when we return, our final thoughts on helping others facing the challenge of giving up. <laughs>